So a lot of you have been asking me about using hills to plant things like zucchinis and pumpkins. And today's episode, we're gonna talk about why that is, why you should be using hills, and when it isn't always really necessary. All that in today's episode. Let's go. So believe it or not, the idea of using hills to grow things like squash and pumpkins is not new whatsoever. In fact, it's actually really old. It's probably one of the oldest farming methods that uh, we really know about today. And it was adopted from the Pueblo Indians who grew things like corn, squash, and beans over 2,000 years ago down in areas like New Mexico. And uh, the idea behind using hills was really around their style of farming. Now, they used a style of farming known as dryland farming. And what dryland farming is, is essentially taking advantage of the seasons, the seasonal rain that exists, and then basically sustaining that moisture in the ground throughout the dry season, and basically getting plants growing, getting their roots established, so that when it is dry, um, they're essentially able to kind of sustain themselves. But when the water is there, they take advantage of it. And believe it or not, that style of gardening is still practiced today in many parts of the world. And if you go down to like places like uh, Mexico, where water is very scarce, you'll see this happening all the time. In fact, on our trip down to Mexico uh, two years ago, we actually saw many farms where they were practicing dry farming with things like tomatoes. So it's a very popular method, but how does it actually, you know, where, how does that tie into growing things like pumpkins and squash? Well, what they would do is they would actually build up mounds and those mounds would actually kind of create an island during periods of heavy rain. So if you can kind of imagine a mound being built up here, these mounds would be two or three feet in diameter and they would build them up about a foot off the ground. So it's nice and tall. And then they would have channels and these channels worked almost like aqueducts. And the aqueducts um, that was over in Greece, uh, they would use basically water that flows through these channels and it would allow for the water to irrigate the crops and we use that in even today's modern day farming practices with furrows, right? Furrows uh, allow for water to be channeled when it rains. And the same exact style of farming was used back then. And they would apply it to, uh, to things like squash and pumpkins because they like to be off the ground. They don't like to be uh, surrounded by water. And so this would allow the water to be uh, you know, around the plants, to irrigate the plants, without actually flooding the plants out. It was an incredibly genius way of growing. And since then, there's been many iterations on kind of hill culture or uh, you know, hill farming style of, of gardening, but it's all based around that style of farming from the Pueblo Indians. And I think it's a really great way to do it, but is it entirely necessary in today's day and age? And that's kind of what I wanna to touch on next because a lot of people still swear by, and many seed packets will tell you, make a mound, that's about you know a uh, foot in diameter, plant two or three seeds in a mound. And so you see things like pumpkins and squash directing you on how to do that. And so everyone just assumes that that is required, yet it's really not 100% required. And I wanna to touch on why. So modern day technology has really taken a lot of the need away to grow in mounds when it comes to squash and pumpkins. The reason why is because uh, you know, if you have things like raised beds or other modern day irrigation techniques, you don't have to abide by some of the old techniques that they used back in the day. They still work, they absolutely work, but some of our new technologies that we have, such as things like raised beds, can really take away all of the need to have a mound in the first place. Or if you have drip irrigation, you're not going to be flooding your channels with water, right? There's far more efficient ways of irrigating these days that, um, you know, that don't really rely on Flooding our, flooding our gardens temporarily during the wet season to, uh, to water our crops. Now, I will say that that style of gardening absolutely still exists. In fact, my grandpa would have sworn that you had to plant things like squash and pumpkins in hills to the very day he was alive. His garden was a standard in-ground garden. And that's really where the difference lies, is that the style of gardening that you choose will make a big difference to whether or not you should be using hills or you can kind of abandon the idea of using hills. And so if you're growing in ground, you're basically planting at soil level. There's no difference between 2000 years ago and today, or even 2000 years in the future. If you're growing at soil level, there's going to be water that during the wet season will kind of have a chance of flooding your plants. And if it does flood your plants, you can risk losing them. Things like powdery mildew and root rot will absolutely take hold a lot faster at soil level 
than it does in something like a raised bed. And so if you're growing in ground like my grandpa did, using hills can absolutely be a, a something that you can have a huge advantage uh, over not using hills because it's gonna give your plants that extra elevation to keep them dry, to keep the soil nice and, you know, nice and dry, keep the roots healthier so they're not getting root rot, and keep the leaves off of the soil where they can have a little more airflow. So even though it's a 2000 year old method, it still does apply based on the gardening method that you're choosing. So when it comes to raised beds, the reason why we don't need hills is obviously because, as I kind of alluded to, the whole bed is kind of a hill as it is. If we didn't have the beds here holding the soil up, it'd be more of like a rounded berm, but it would still be elevated. It would still be a giant mound of soil, essentially. So the raised bed takes out the need for us to grow in mounds. If you have something like drip irrigation, if you're growing in ground, I would still probably recommend growing in mounds because it's at soil level, despite using drip irrigation. But if you have drip irrigation plus raised beds, that's a, just another additional way of kind of getting further away from that style of gardening. And once you understand that they are just different styles of gardening and they don't all have to, you know, they don't all have to apply, right? One method does not have to be used by all styles of gardening. It's just a portion of a style of gardening that we've adopted and thought was necessary to this style of gardening. Because I still see people even to this day making giant mounds in their raised beds. And I just think to myself, man, I, I, don't, I don't know if they don't know that that's unnecessary or not. Because the last time my raised beds ever had enough water to, <laughs> to go past the uh, to go past the wood was never. I've never had 12 inches of, of water to where I needed an additional, you know, 10 to 12 inches of soil above that to provide that additional amount of drainage. So it's a little bit unnecessary in raised beds. Now, the style of gardening is not wrong. And I also want to touch on that because um, I know a lot of people have a tendency to, got a mark where I planted my seeds. Um, a lot of people have a tendency to think that just because we have abandoned this style of gardening, that there's nothing that you could take from it. And what I would say is that it's really important that we learn about these styles of gardening because it's not that you don't need it now. It's like my math teacher told me. It's not that you don't need it now, it's that you might need it in the future. And I love that because my math teacher, Miss Mott, if you're watching, thank you, because I can bring it full circle back to my gardening channel here. This style of gardening, just because I don't need it with raised beds, doesn't mean I shouldn't learn about it. Doesn't mean I shouldn't actually uh, become knowledgeable on it because there might be a time in the future when I need to know it and if I don't know it, then I'm sunk. And so it's just important, I think, to be more well-rounded as well. It's, yes, it's a 2000 year old method, but the reason why it's still used today is because shockingly enough, there's a reason why it works. And so just because it's not necessary here doesn't mean I would not encourage you guys to you know, to learn about it. And so um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And I know this was a shorter length episode again, but again, I just want to teach you guys about the how and why of gardening and to realize that gardening is not a one size fits all solution. And what works for me doesn't work for you. And if you're growing in ground, we're gonna have different gardening methods that we're both growing a garden, but there's different methods that apply to different styles of gardening. And so that is hopefully the big takeaway from today's episode. But I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you all learned something new. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll catch you all on the next episode. Take care, bye.